2414 is a podcast about finding hope and common ground through casual conversation. Like the friends on the road in the New Testament, in Luke chapter 24, verse 14, we want to walk away with more understanding that leads to more conversation as the journey continues. Thanks for walking with us. And you know what that sound means. <laughs> and you know what that means. <laughs> hey, welcome back to 2414. That's Shane. I'm Dan. Hey. Hey, Shane. That's What, what are you doing? I don't know. I love it. I never know. Uh, well, today, uh, some things will be same. Some things will be different. Uh, what's going to be the same as where we've been recently is we're continuing our conversation about can we trust the Bible, uh, looking at... Um, the, the Christian scriptures, the Hebrew Bible, Greek New Testament. Uh, what's going to be a little bit different is we're going to do a expedited round of highs and lows, meaning, do you have any highs and lows? Yeah. You don't, have, you don't have to, yeah. Yeah. Uh, high, well, low. I've got a pretty nasty gash on my arm from, or palm. Eh. From what? Uh, we're playing, uh, we were at a... Church family's house for celebrating 4th of July. Okay. We were playing bump, lightning, whatever you want to call it, basketball. Oh, I like that game. And I just like slipped on like oil or uh, water or something. Just <laughs> The high to it is I'm also excited because I haven't had like a deep wound in a while. It's and I'm weird, like, dude. Oh. It's weird. Yeah, well, I don't bruise. So like it, most, <laughs> You're like Wolverine. Can, I, I heal too I quickly. I never bruise. I don't bruise. I, I'm just it's too strong. Fun fact about okay. me. I, I just don't. I can get hit with mock forces. And, Challenge accepted. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm excited. So I, your high and low is you're wounded. A flesh wound. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> That's that. Cool. My low <laughs> for the week is the Cardinals are just terrible. <laughs> uh, it's just, but I guess my high is like at some point it's just comedically terrible. It's you, you just have to laugh a little bit. Um, That's true. My you've other had some good seasons. We've had some good runs. <laughs> this is not one. This a historically bad season for the Cardinals. Um, uh, another hi- high though mm-hmm. is my uh, air conditioning unit that I mentioned a few episodes oh, ago yeah. in the window. We're getting we're getting some work out of that bad boy this really? week. It's actually it's. Insane. Installed, it's working. Yeah, it's 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 uh, it's saving us. It's hot. <sighs> Western Washington is it is a heat wave. It's like eighty six today, <laughs> <laughs> which is it is warm. It it's is weird going into my car and like oh ooh, yeah, sweating now. So that's that's my uh, my low. Cardinals are losing. My high is that we have. By we, my wife and I have air conditioning in our room. Oh, is it room. just in your room? It's just in our room. Oh, no. So, so the kids are roasting. That's not my high, but the high is that I have air conditioning. That's, and okay. it's just incidental that they do not. <laughs> Thank All you. right. Yeah. So instead of a question of the day, Shane, I saw that box of outburst in the corner. Yeah. And it was just calling to me. So I've got a stack of outburst cards. I'm going to select one at random. We're going to flip the timer and we're going to play one ra- one thirty second round of outburst. I love it. And you can play at home too. Yeah, play along uh, at home. We are going to get to the Bible in just about a minute here. But first, a quick round of outburst, the game of verbal I, explosions. I have to add, uh, outburst has been on my mind a lot since we played it. <laughs> It is. Think, thinking a lot about it. I think it's actually, it's actually a great game, even if we're not playing it right. It's just like... Oh, and we're not. We're not even trying to play no, it right. But he, like, it, it's just... It's so fun, like, the fact, like, you're thinking in, like, 1980s mindset, and it's, like, family feud style. I love it. <laughs> All right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick two. Uh, I've got one in my left hand and one in my right hand, and you can pick left or right, and then that's going to oh. be your category. Oh, man. Well, front or back, dude. Uh, the side that's facing me. Okay. Uh, let's go left. Left hand. Okay. Uh, that's probably the better one for us. Woo, all right. Uh, what you didn't pick is cities in Germany. Ooh, okay. That, that would have been good. But that would have been good. What you did pick is, uh, i got to start the timer. I'm going to okay. say it, and then I'm going to flip the timer. All right. Uh, friends at home, you can play along. We are looking for the top 10, based on some criteria from 1980s, mm-hmm. uh, ants, uh, things related to this heading, and we have 30 <laughs> seconds to do it. This should be pretty easy. Major religious holidays. Okay. Christmas. Okay. Easter. Thanksgiving. Religious? Major re- oh, yeah. religious holidays, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Valentine's Day. <laughs> Uh, All Saints Day. Oh my! Uh, Pentecost. <laughs> uh, Ramadan. Uh, Hanukkah. Hanukkah. Chinese New Year. 
Is that religious? I don't know. It's, just, it's, it's, this is Mount Burst. There's no reason I, behind this. Oh, man. Um, Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur. Uh, Rosh Hashanah. I don't even know how to spell these. Um, did I say Ramadan? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, um, Kwanzaa? Oh. I don't know. Maybe. Maybe. Uh, uh, ref- Reformation? <laughs> Passover, I'm going to say. Reformation Day is not on I don't, there. You know, you <laughs> never know. All Saints 1980s, Day. 1980s, different. Reformation Day. Oh, I'm blanking. Uh, uh, St. Patty's. <laughs> Major time. Major. Major religious holidays. St. Hey, they don't have Day. to be right answers. They just have to be on the card. <laughs> Jolly Green Giant was on Tall People. <laughs> I don't need to. <laughs> also, the giant from Jack of the Beanstalk. Two separate answers: the giant and the Jolly Green Giant. <laughs> you don't have to be real. All right, Shane. Uh, before we reveal, what's your estimate of the ten? How many did we get? I think we got five, and I think there's another five. We're just we just completely oh, blanked. Only five? I'm, I'm gonna say seven. All right. Okay. Here we go. Chinese Lunar New Year is on there. I'll oh my goodness! Not a good start. Oh um, my goodness! I told you. Oh no. We did, okay. We did okay. Okay. The first one we did not get. Ash Wednesday. Ash Wednesday. <laughs> the number one answer for. They're not even alphabetical order. There's okay. So, um, survey says somehow, Ash Wednesday is the number one major religious holiday. I, okay. So zero. Um, number two, Saint Patrick's Day. You are Clutch. welcome. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I I doubted. I did not believe. Uh, number three, Good Friday. I don't think we got that I feel that one. sad. No, we did not we say good Friday. Ash Wednesday or good Friday. Okay, moving on. We're not working at a church or anything. Uh, number four, Easter. We got Easter. I can't believe that's not like two know. or one. Number five, I said Passover. We got Passover. Okay. So so far we have St. Patrick's Day, Easter, and Passover. So. Uh, Rosh Hashanah said that one. Number seven, oh. Palm Sunday. I don't think we, we did said. not say Palm Sunday. Okay. Number eight, Yom Kippur. Got it. Okay. Number nine, Christmas Day. Doesn't it's weird? This is Christmas Day, not like Christmas Eve. If, I, we just I, said I, Christmas. I'd give us one if think, the other's on there. Uh, if there's no Christmas Eve, no, it's not. There's no Christmas okay, Eve. Okay, then yeah. I'd, I'd, okay, we got it. And then Hanukkah. We did say Hanukkah. So six, six. So you said five. I guess seven. Split the difference. So we did not get Holy Week. Basically, Ash Wednesday, <laughs> Good Friday, and Palm Sunday. And what else did we miss? Uh, Maybe we have seven. So we got St. Patrick's Day, we got Easter, we got Rosh Hashanah, Yom Kippur, Christmas, and Hanukkah. Oh, we got seven. Oh, wow. Yeah, so all, all we missed was Ash Wednesday, the beginning of Lent, and Good Friday, and Palm Sunday. Like they're like major the, Christian holidays. The major Holy Week. <laughs> I just I had little faith that that was going to be on there. Yeah. I think I'm just too much of like my secular brain is like, oh, they wouldn't. Include the the yeah. ones we know, and I didn't remember that it said religious holidays until you laughed at me for saying Thanksgiving, <laughs> and I was about, I was gonna say New Year's Eve next. Like was, I was just gonna go holidays. They were pilgrims, or uh, that no, that came like I don't know. All right, well, Who knows that's a, that was a pretty good round of outbursts, the game of verbal that explosions. Good. That's a win in my book. That's yeah, always always a pleasure, Shane. Thanks, <laughs> thanks for indulging. So uh, where we where we left yeah. off uh, with uh, can we trust the Bible was we were looking at the New Testament's view of the Old Testament, how specifically we looked at things like. Um, the New Testament is citing it, like quoting it as an authority. We looked at how um, they were talking about the major categories of the Old Testament. So the books, um, Moses, the prophets, the writings, these are the the categories in the books that the New Testament is quoting. Mm-hmm. Um, and we talked about um, uh, the fact that the New Testament views the Old Testament as pointing to Jesus. So it's all about Jesus. Um, Mm -hmm. So law, prophets, and the writings are fulfilled in Jesus, specific prophecies, um, specific kind of Old Testament institutions, uh, but also just in general, kind of the whole thing is about Jesus. Mm -hmm. Um, So so that's where where we left it last time. Yeah. Um, Any thoughts, like follow-up as as you left and walked away? Yeah, I'm... uh, Well, I'm I'm just jogging my, my own memory. I'm trying to remember if... This includes the epistles, and I think it did. Yeah, uh, we didn't. I didn't look at that as much. I'm kind of focusing on the four gospels, but the okay. ep- the epistles certainly 
quote the Old Testament a lot, and we did look a little bit at the book of Acts, where the the first Christian sermons, Mm -hmm. um, we talked about authorship there a little bit, that the first Christian sermons in the book of Acts, not only are they quoting the Old Testament, but they'll say things like, and the Holy Spirit said, um, in the words of David, or David speaking by the Holy Spirit said, Mm -hmm. and so the the, uh, assumption or the understanding of how the Old Testament came to be, the New Testament sees the Old Testament books as the word of God and the word of man, and it doesn't see a problem between those two things. Mm. Yeah, okay. So divine authorship through human people. mm -hmm. And all those years later, they're still saying, hey, remember these things, and they're talking about them as if it were today. So... Yep. Pretty yeah. cool. Yep. Yeah, still, still bears on our lives right here now. Yeah. I think. I think what I'm, I think, I'm curious about at the moment, uh, was you uh, continued this conversation this last Sunday. Mm-hmm. So, how did the conversation shift in the room from talking about it one week to the other? I guess it's because in some ways, like I, I've had. I guess time to think about it and ruminate it. And then I guess so did a few other people. Yeah. I, I think, um, well, one of the weird dynamics of our Sunday morning kind of adult Bible study conversation or class or lecture mm-hmm. is that, and this is the same thing with a lot of church things is that I'm thinking about this stuff all week long, mm. like uh, hours I'm digging in, I'm exciting. I'm preparing slides and handout. And, and then on Sunday morning, it's 9.30 on a Sunday morning. <laughs> like, people just woke up. They had their cup of coffee. Like, they survived a work week. They did chores on Saturday. Like, they drug their kids to church. Yeah. And, like, they sit, they pour a cup of coffee and they sit down. And they're like, where are we? And I'm like, here we go! <laughs> uh, <laughs> and so there's, like... Um, so I, I think the fact that we spent two weeks on the topic was helpful. Mm-hmm. So that the previous oh, week, okay. I was talking about... Hey, have you ever thought about how the New Testament describes the Old Testament? And for like an hour, people are like, I don't really know what you're saying. I don't care. I don't Mm. see why this is relevant. It was kind of, and I think people appreciated it, but the, like the whiplash of, I just got to church to, here's a really strange angle on a question you've never asked. (laughs) And like, it's just like, it's, it's so out of the blue. It's hard for people to like get there. So having a second week. Um, with maybe even a, a, a finer point was, I think, helpful that people were like, all right, we know what we're talking about now. Um, mm-hmm. Please continue. Gotcha. Okay. So, which is which is probably a good truth for conversation in general of um, just set it, set the stage a little bit. Yeah. Give give people space to to think about it, to process it. I think a whole week is a long time. But, yeah, I mean, like in day-to-day conversation – I don't know. I think of it like, because I'm an adult now, I do adult things, preparing for a meeting. Here's the context of what we're going to be talking yeah, about. Here's so you're not agenda. just coming in. Why are we here? All right. We're talking about right, like, yeah. the so, quota. So things Why? like, here's the agenda. Here's how we're going to go about it. Here's what we're hoping to have as an outcome when we leave. Yeah. That 30 seconds goes a long way. Yeah. We're working on our we, children with this, that uh, uh, my boys in particular will just start talking. Yeah, <laughs> and, and and we have to say, um, w- would you ask if I'd like to hear about what you're about to start talking about? Um, no what, whatever it is, like you know, the, the the level three evolution of this thing is this and this. I'm like, I I was actually talking to your mother, and I missed the first half of what you were saying. <laughs> and I don't care right now. <laughs> and I don't care. Um, so people cared this weekend. Having some <laughs> having some context allows people to participate in the conversation a little more. That's good. That's, That's my social takeaway. Okay. So so I guess people people had time to think about it. So how did the I guess specifically the, the conversation adapt or change to that in the room? Yeah, I I think um, I'd say um, good receptivity. So. You so know. were you just kind of reading through sources and you're like, all right, guys, we're talking about this acts 4, 24, 25. And you just laid it out or, uh, 
I, I um, <laughs> you, you're really you're really selling it, Jane. Well, I'm just saying, like <laughs> people be lining up out the door this Sunday. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm, I'm here trying we to go. I'm trying to set the bar low. You're supposed to say, no, I didn't do that exactly. I did. <laughs> what if I did? Uh, <laughs> oh no, I, no. <laughs> well, when there's when there's eighty ish people in the room, it lends itself more to lecture than one big conversation. Okay. So um, it, I'd say it's, it leans towards teaching from up front more than a big conversation. Okay. So uh, where the conversation slash teaching went this week was having looked at the New Testament's view of the Old Testament in general, we focused on um, what does Jesus have to say specifically about some of the content of the Old Testament. So we looked at what Jesus had to say. And then there were like uh, three or four kind of obscure verses um, Mm -hmm. having to do with um, authorship and how the New Testament starts to think about itself. That sounds really uh, obscure, but we'll get there. So so, does that mean like self-quoting? Like from the same... I, yeah, I'm, I'm it's, it's a weird question. Yeah. So, so we looked at what does Jesus have to say about the Old Testament, and then we looked at um, sort of some New Testament, I'll say nods, like kind of nudges and hints at at least how I'll say the early Christians were thinking about what would become the New Testament. Okay, so it, is this when you say okay? So, so when that's referenced in the New Testament, is that in the gospel or is this like acts or so i've I've got a couple a verse from peter a verse from paul a verse from um, jesus okay kind of thinking helping us um start to conceptualize this forming of what would become the new testament okay interesting (laughs) do we want to just dive right into that i'm kind of curious what that well, looks sure. like no. Maybe, let me let me let me check my, my check my Jesus boxes real quick here. <laughs> okay, is that all right? We don't yes. have to. No, no, no. That's fine. Just said it funny. Yes. All right. So, <laughs> well, what's what strikes me about how Jesus talks about the Old Testament is that there are weird stories in the Old Testament. Yeah, there's a lot. Like, I, I think as Christians, we do a disservice to the world, our young people, and probably we're even not being very honest to ourselves when we act like it all makes sense. Yeah. Or like, oh, that's that's normal. Like, why wouldn't you believe that? Why would you believe that? That's crazy. Why? Why, why is this story in here? Like, I, what? what there, is? Yeah, I just, just I just want to acknowledge there's some weird stuff in the Old Testament. Now, I believe the Bible's inspired inerrant word of God. I feel like I need to say that every week yeah. so yeah, yeah, people yeah. don't get mad at me. Yes. Um, I, and yet, so I I can believe the Bible's true and say, but like, if God didn't tell us this, there's no way we would think that happened. Yeah. And if, if somebody else told you that, you would never believe them. And I would even add to that from the words of uh, Christian Lutheran rapper Flame in one of his albums. I think it's Extra in Those. Mm-hmm. Where he's talking about singing about communion. Like, like communion, it's a, it's a pretty, like, weird thing when, like, we're eating the body and blood, eating and drinking the body, blood of Jesus pretty weird but we also believed a man rose from the dead so why stop there like what like, yeah, yeah. why is that like there, and, <laughs> and i think how you ordered that actually is um the the christian way to think about these things we and and this is maybe a, a little bit um complicated to just assert over the radio um mm-hmm. but we don't believe jesus rose from the dead because the bible said so but because Jesus rose from the dead, we trust the Bible as the word of God. Mm. That's deep. So never, we don't yeah. just start with the Bible is the word of God and therefore we learn all these things. Yeah. Now, I, I believe it is the word of God, but um, I think as Christians, we start in a sense with the resurrection of Christ and then work backwards. Mm-hmm. Um, and so if you, if you can swallow the idea that death itself is undone and this guy rose, the rest isn't so complicated. Yeah. Um, <laughs> if we can, if we can get, get past that hump. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, floods happen all the time. Now I've never experienced a worldwide flood. I can conceptualize it, mm-hmm. but resurrections don't happen all the time. Um, I've mm-hmm. buried a number of people. They're still there. That's how it works. Mm-hmm. Um, so, so, uh, so, so Jesus um, speaks about, not just the Old Testament in general, but some specific things. And 
I think he highlights some of those stories, uh, narratives is maybe a nicer way of saying that. I don't, I don't mean story in like a fairy tale or false way. Yeah. But, but the narratives, the episodes that people today might be most um, quick to dismiss. Yeah. So there's weird, there's, there's normal stories in the Old Testament. David sees an attractive woman and sleeps with her. Okay, that's not hard to imagine. Yeah, but that <laughs> yeah, that's like comparable to now, like yeah. modern. So there are plenty of Old Testament stories that are like, yeah, that makes sense. That's just how life works. But then there's some really out there ones that mm. almost feel like, well, obviously nobody believes that. That's why I feel like I, I always I'm always reading that for the Book of Jonah specifically. That's yeah. just, that's always coming up. Yeah. Like more and more Christians or people nowadays are dismissing Jonah. They're like, ah, yeah. It's, it's a fairy tale. Like it's right. a, yeah, whatever. So here's what's interesting. So Jesus doesn't cite a, a bunch of places. Neil. I mean, he, he doesn't quote hundreds of stories. He, he quotes a handful. Yeah. But the ones he quotes are Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden, um, Noah and the flood, uh, Jonah being swallowed, mm-hmm. um, and, and there's this other obscure one in the Book of Numbers where. People are being bitten by snakes and they cry out to the Lord and God tells Moses, all right, here's what you're going to do. These Uh snakes are a problem. I want you to build like a bronze snake, like a statue of a snake, put it up on a stick. And if people get bit by these, they can look at that one and they're going to be healed. John three, verse 18. There you go. That's one of the two verses I've got. No, (laughs) right right before John three, 16. Yeah. I I just remember that just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert. So the son of man would be lifted up also. Yeah. So it's a really cool narrative. Like, yeah. So Jesus compares his crucifixion, like the historical grounding for that. He's like, what's going to happen to me is just like what Moses did with that serpent. Yeah. Which is so just, like that, that's one of those like early, like people are new to Christianity or like you're young. Like that's one of like those cool parallel stories. That's like, oh, like there's something really like cool happening here. Like there's a, everything's con- like connected. Like, yeah, that's the point. But yeah, it's one of those early bridges. Like, oh, that's so cool. <laughs> so, yeah. So, so the sto- some of the key stories that Jesus refers to as, as kind of touchstones for his ministry is. Adam and Eve as real people in the Garden of Eden, uh, mm-hmm. a flood that came upon the world unawares and, you know, wiped out people. Um, Jonah being in the belly of the sea creature for days and nights and mm-hmm. um, the serpent being lifted up in the wilderness. Jesus says, like, just like that thing happened, this other thing in my ministry is going to happen too. That's, uh, so I, I brought up the John, John 3 one. Mm-hmm. I can't remember if we, we covered one of these last week or not, but was there one, uh, handy on yeah, I mean, I could, I handout? Can, I'm I trying to read, remember read the text here. Um, yeah. so, um, so Matthew 24, 38 and 39, uh, this is, uh, mm. this is Jesus has been asked about the end of the world and what's going to be the sign. How are we going to be, know it's time. Mm-hmm. And he says, Um, For as in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and given in marriage until the day when Noah entered the ark, and they were unaware until the flood came and swept them all away. So will be the coming of the Son of Man. That's Matthew 24, 38 and 39. Mm -hmm. So he's saying his return in judgment is going to be just like it was in Noah's day. People were going about their normal business, and and then this uh, calamity came upon them. So it's always just always so interesting too to think kind of like a side thing with that like like oh yeah there were people with normal or like living like there was a societies and whatnot at the time of Noah and like yeah. we knew it was bad like corrupt it like it yeah. it said it was it was bad enough like ugh. but it's just interesting to think like yeah you know just as people were living their life like then like oh yeah they were they were like just Kind of yeah. like, so so as ah. Jesus quotes these things, I, my point, I guess, is that um, he seems to be endorsing the historicity of those events. He he mm-hmm. seemed to be saying this stuff happened. Mm-hmm. Now I, I want to acknowledge, though, it is it's possible to quote fairy tales for a point. Mm-hmm. So I, I could say something like. Just like Sam followed Frodo into Mordor, Shane, I will follow you into, you know, the Brewer Stadium. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, and, you know, I, so I think 
there there is something to say for having a common history and shared language allows people to speak in illusions and metaphors. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah. I th- but I, I I also think if you read the text of the Gospels, there are not any clues that Jesus is adapting a a fairy tale for his purposes. And, yeah. and the verbs themselves seem to most naturally read as just like this thing happened, this other thing will happen. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess, you know, it, it's possible just to, to have humility here to say it's possible Jesus was simply using the cultural metaphors of his day to teach something. Mm-hmm. Um, but I, I don't think you can read Matthew 24 and 25 and think that that Jesus thinks his second coming is a metaphor for, you know, being a good person or judgment in that sense. Like, yeah, the the metaphor is supposed to be like intentional and that like Jesus is clear. He's coming back and it's going to be like when the flood killed everybody, but Noah and his family. Mm -hmm. And so, so yeah, so his, the ground for his argument is this Old Testament obscure story. And it is the same thing with Adam and Eve, the same thing with, with Jonah, same thing with the bronze serpent and Moses. Hmm. So yeah, an endorsement is my word probably. Like Jesus is endorsing not just the Old Testament in general, but specifically certain stories and and some of the weirder ones, he takes it for granted. Yeah, that well, that happened, obviously. Yeah, like... And I might have asked this before. Was the... Old Testament, the collection of books as we know it now, then? Yeah, so so what we would call the Old Testament or the, the 39 books of the Hebrew Bible, you know, mm. those, those were the books and the categories that Jesus and his contemporaries recognized as the Old Testament. Okay, okay. Now, there's not necessarily this black and white list, uh, and, and maybe there's some open questions about some of the... You know, I mentioned before, like Esther and Ecclesiastes, mm. the, you know, they're not quoted in the New Testament. Um, yeah. But but interestingly, Jesus isn't making any like big argument based on those things. Yeah. So I, I, I think most people recognize that the, the Old Testament canon, the, the authoritative list of books that we have today, um, mm-hmm. is the, the same list that they had in Jesus' day. Okay. Um, you know, if we if we wanted to be like super super rigorous, maybe we'd have to say like, okay, thirty six of the thirty nine books are firm, but there's you know there's a couple suspect ones that aren't quoted with um, scripture. Okay, itself. like fine, like if that's mm-hmm. if that's the big objection between you um, hearing the word of Jesus and and, and trusting God's word, I, I'm I'm okay if you trust thirty six books of the Old Testament mm-hmm. and and see Jesus as the risen Son of God and. Adam and Eve as the first creatures and God flooding the world through Noah. If, yeah. if, if you have a hard time with Esther, okay. Okay. That's <laughs> great. Like you can be a member of good standing here. <laughs> Come be baptized. I, I'm okay. You just don't like that book specifically. Yeah. Yeah. No. Okay. Uh, all right. So those, those were, I guess the Jesus specifically talking yeah. about um, these stories of old and, and, uh, the old. And one, one, one quick wrap up thought on Jesus here, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, he could have been wrong. Like if, if you're not a Christian and you don't believe Jesus as this authoritative voice, okay. Like he could have been wrong or he could have been misleading people. Um, but it kind of goes to CS Lewis's, you know, liar, lunatic, or Lord. Mm-hmm. Like he could have been misleading people or he could have been a crazy person. Um, but, but he's not a good person or a good teacher. Um, if, if he's misleading or out of his mind. Yeah, that's um, true. There's there's a lot more to it than just that. So, yeah. yeah. So if, if Jesus can be trusted, um, he seems to think the old, the things of the old Testament actually happened. Yeah. And I, I happen to think he can be trusted. Yeah. <laughs> I like them. All right. All right. So we've got, all right, that kind of, section yeah so now my more obscure one yeah my, the, my, my nods the how the, the new testament starts to think about the new testament yeah or the way i'm imagining it it's like they're referencing their own writing within the book but yeah kind of kind of okay yeah and and uh so i've got i think three verses here 
And I want to acknowledge that these aren't um, like concrete that settles it. Ha, now you have to give up your atheism. <laughs> checkmate. And, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So this is a checkmate. Like, I got you now. Now, infidel, I have you on the hip. Yeah. Line from Shakespeare. Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm so, on culture now. No, it's okay. So this is not that. These are just, ha, huh, that's, for me personally, I think really interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, so these uh, three verses about how we get glimpses within the New Testament about about the New Testament, about how people were thinking about God's word and scripture at the time right after Jesus or even of Jesus. Okay. So let, let me just kind of so, get into them yeah, and then we'll I, unpack them. I'm very curious. So the first one is 2 Timothy chapter 4. Uh, verses 12 through 14. So Paul, um, St. Paul writes these pastoral epistles, um, 1 Timothy, 2 Timothy, Titus, writing to pastors. And um, at the end of, actually at the end of many of Paul's letters, there are these weird parts that we skip over because it's just like, and say hi to this person and say hi to this person. And this person says their greetings. And we're like, I don't, I don't care who these people are. (laughs) At this point, there's nothing there's nothing practical for my life. It's not pointing to Jesus. It's just miscellaneous stuff. Yeah. It's like a shopping list. Yeah. Um, so we skip over these things sometimes. I've never heard too many, I haven't heard too many sermons about some of these weird texts. <laughs> they're just, they're the name trip ups. Is yeah. what I imagine. So second Timothy four, 12 through 14 has all kinds of good stuff in it, but one item relevant for today. So I'm going to read mm-hmm. it. Tychicus, whoever that is, Tychicus, I have sent to Ephesus. When you come, bring the cloaks that I left with Carpus at Troas, also the books, and above all the parchments. Alexander the coppersmith did me great harm. The Lord will repay him according to his deeds. <laughs> it's bold. <laughs> he's just like, you're going to suffer? He's, he's naming names. I, I hope Alexander repented. Um, but uh, even if he did, imagine Alexander's like in heaven and... For all eternity, God's eternal word is like, this guy's a jerk. <laughs> this guy is. And can you imagine like if you're Alexander just... and this is like being read in church later in your life, you're like, I said, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody looks I at him. I got the point. <laughs> Everybody can you is imagine. It, is it Alexander? That, <laughs> is it that coppersmith? <laughs> Name is Alexander. How many Alexander coppersmiths do you know? <laughs> So I love that. Just cracks me up. I'm going to start doing that in sermons, by the way. I'm starting naming names. (laughs) Speaking of adultery. uh, uh, (laughs) I don't know. No. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the way. That's the way. All right. Get get on topic here. So Tychicus, this guy, Paul sent to Ephesus. Um, To Timothy, he says, when you come, I left my coat. (laughs) I left my coat (laughs) with Carpus at Troas. Like, I'm cold. Would you bring my coat? Um, also the books, Hilarious. but this, this phrase here and above all the parchments. So parchment that it, was on, uh, the beginning. That was one of our, our like vocabulary vocab words. words. All right. Yes. Way to go. Passing the quiz. Um, this is, this, that's, um, some of the early, like whether paper or animal skin, what, what the new Testament was being written on, but what mm-hmm. many contemporaries of Paul were writing on. Mm-hmm. So Paul here says there's this. I want my books and my coat, but above all, so there's some high value here, this, this set of writings, the parchments. Um, so there's, there's evidence that during this time, first century or so, when, when people would have a letter written, mm-hmm. um, some people would write, Paul had, had literacy, but there were professional scribes. So you would pay some person and you would dictate the letter. And they would write it. And they for would you? write it. Yeah, okay. they would write it out for you, like a secretary um, back. You know, even this is like the service. So, like, I don't own a pen or paper. Can you write this for me? Yep. Okay. And you know, uh, you probably have um, the the scribe would have you know better handwriting. They'd oh, have yeah. the materials. They're literate. I yeah, guess they're <laughs> literate. So you would dictate a letter, but but oftentimes or sometimes included in that service, they would make a duplicate copy for you. So huh. you would send your letter to the recipient, but you would have the, a copy of what you sent. They'd CC your, yeah, you'd yourself. CC yourself. <laughs> um, so you would send it. You'd send a letter, and you would you would keep one for yourself. Um, so a couple of notes about this. One is you you might notice, you maybe don't. Um, but at the end of many of Paul's letters, mm-hmm. after all the names that we skip, 
sometimes we just tune out at this point and we're done. Yeah. But yeah. sometimes at the very end, there will be a final greeting where Paul will say something like, and see with what large letters I write my own name here. Mm. So meaning... So meaning the scribe, the professional person, wrote the letter as Paul dictated it. And then Paul, like a child with a crayon, <laughs> would make his mark <laughs> on the bottom of the thing. This is my... <laughs> this is, yeah, so okay. so the, 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 the professional copyist, they'd be writing the letter, and then Paul would put his autograph, his signature on the bottom, mm -hmm. and it would stand out, and it would be kind of identifiable. Like you you have a, a Michael Jordan autograph, you go on, mm -hmm. you know, the Pawn Stars, and they can say, yep, that's authentic. they authenticate it. Okay. So Paul says, you can authenticate this letter because it's got my signature on the bottom. Um, two things. One, the fact that early Christians, when they were hand copying the what, what would become the New Testament, mm -hmm. all of our manuscripts of these letters have that written by the copyists. So Paul makes his mark. See with what large letters I write my hand. Mm -hmm. And then... Shane's making his copy of that letter for somebody, and he includes those words. See with what large letters <laughs> I write this in my own hand. And then some monk 200 years later is copying you know, the letter to Galatians, and he goes, see with what large letters I write this. Which is really weird. Like, if you were going to leave something out, you, you certainly wouldn't include that. It yeah. has no value. But I'm glad they did. Yeah, like, so, yeah, so the value of that for us today speaks to the fact that very, very early on, the Christians recognized we are going to copy this thing verbatim and we're not going to mess with it. Even the stuff about Alexander the coppersmith gets copied. All of just all of it. It's all being copied. It's yeah, like good we, stuff. We don't want to lose any of this. Cool. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's fascinating. Yeah. But, but as it relates uh -huh. to here, the above all the parchments, um, it's very possible, if not likely, that when Paul was writing Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, mm -hmm. he sent them a letter, but he got a copy for himself. Mm -hmm. And so, as he's sending these letters, Galatians, Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, or Romans, he's getting a collection of the 13 epistles of St. Paul that he has like an original set at home mm -hmm. of the half the New Testament. Yeah. And so when he's locked away in prison and he's like, bring my coat, this guy's a jerk. Above all, <laughs> above all, bring the parchments. Yeah. And so I, I think Paul might even be recognizing the letters he's been sending to the churches. Maybe there's more to them than he initially thought. Mm -hmm. And so like, make sure you grab that stack of my letters. Okay. So even, even then he knew like, well, I, do you think, cause Paul, was writing these letters like he knew that they were this was some pretty good stuff he was writing or it was just like i paid a lot of money for the scribe <laughs> like i'm getting that's awesome get, get my money's worth you better keep those uh <laughs> i suppose it could be either one um i also don't know how aware the authors were so uh, from a christian point of view if these are inspired god-breathed documents written by humans mm -hmm. um, the bible doesn't tell us what their awareness of that process was at all times. There are a couple of comments here and there where Paul will say something like, now this is me talking, not the Lord. Now back to what the Lord has to say. He, oh, okay. he says stuff like that in first Corinthians. Mm -hmm. um, but this, this reference here um, might be recognizing that um, Paul recognized his, his letters as having kind of special authority. Mm -hmm. So in the first couple centuries, the um, collections of what would become the New Testament, there were two groups of writings. There was the four Gospels in one book, and then there were the letters of Paul in another book. Mm -hmm. And this is what the early Christians had. And then the other writings kind of get added in. We'll talk about that in a few weeks. Okay. Um, but, yeah, yeah. But so it's Paul might here be talking about a collection of his own writings as as something special. But now, part part... But parchments at the same time could mean, so it's, it could be love letters from his girlfriend. Sure. Okay. I mean, it could be, that was, that wasn't like a, a, this, you know, a, a writing surface that was only used by authors of the New Testament. No, it was, it was a common, like grab my whiteboard. Okay. Um, yeah. Grab my cool. tablet. <laughs> so, yeah, it's cool uh, and yet the fact that he's saying, I want my coat, bring my books, but above all the parchments, it, it 
it seems to be like the parchments. Like he's talking about something very specific Mm -hmm. um, that would match with the collection of kind of the the copies of the letters that he would have had. Mm Mm-hmm. Hmm. All right, so okay. that, that's that's one kind of obscure, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Uh, this 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 one from Second Peter here, Second Peter chapter three, verses fourteen through sixteen. Um, this is the second letter that Saint Peter wrote. All right. Mm-hmm. Therefore, beloved, since you are waiting for these, like the end of the time and judgment, all that stuff, mm-hmm. be diligent to be found by him without spot or blemish and at peace. And count the patience of our Lord as salvation, just as our beloved brother Paul also wrote to you, according to the wisdom given him, as he does in all his letters when he speaks in them of these matters. There are some things in them that are hard to understand, which the ignorant and unstable twist to their own destruction as they do the other scriptures. So Peter, at the end of his letter, is talking about um, the things I'm writing you are, these are the same things that St. Paul wrote to you already. So mm-hmm. you know this stuff because Paul, with the wisdom that was given him also talked about these things. Mm-hmm. So verse 16, as he does in all his letters, when he speaks in them, in his letters about these matters, there are some things in them that are hard to understand, which I love that, that St. Peter, one of the 12 disciples who spent three <laughs> years with Jesus himself <laughs> is like, Man, sometimes I read Paul, I'm like, I don't, I don't even know. I don't even know. <laughs> one of the 12. Yeah. One of the 12, you know, filled with the spirit on Pentecost Day itself. He's like, you know, sometimes I read Paul, I'm like, I got nothing. I, I don't know. It's hard to understand. So that, <laughs> that gives me comfort. Yeah. So so yeah. Even, even the early d- disciples were like, man, this is not always easy. Mm-hmm. Um. But the, because some of the things that Paul says are hard, people twist his words. So, mm-hmm. um, which the ignorant and unstable twist to their own destruction as they do the other scriptures. So, Peter is saying that people misuse Paul's words just like they do the other scriptures, meaning the Old Testament. Mm-hmm. So, Peter seems to be describing Paul's letters on equal footing with the Old Testament. And it's, like you were saying, well, from one of the 12, too. So that's that's kind of... Yeah, that's that's a high authority. Yeah. Um, like, that. that's kind of... Like, it doesn't get, like, it closer to Jesus than that. Right. Yeah, <laughs> and... and it's hard. It's hard to give some analogies of of what a bold statement this was. So I think about um, mm-hmm. after the resurrection when Jesus shows up in the locked room and mm-hmm. Thomas is there the second time mm-hmm. and he says, "My Lord and my God," right? Mm-hmm. Um, like that's a uh, expression of praise that you, as a first century Jew, or even really anybody would never use for like a normal friend or honorific title. No. So like, like a teacher. Yeah. Uh, so like, Shane, I like you. I think you're a good friend and a good musician. You know, if you had a great performance on a Sunday and I came up and like knelt and said, my Lord and my God, <laughs> you'd be like, no, like that's no, not okay. This- like <laughs> even in jest, like that's not, don't No. And, yeah. and so in a similar way, the old Testament was believed to be the very word of God, Mm -hmm. like in a class utterly of its own. Mm -hmm. And so for a Jew, Peter, to say, gosh, Paul's writings are just like the rest of God's word in the Old Testament. Mm -hmm. Like, it'd be like if if I, you know, if I sent a congregation wide email, Mm -hmm. you would never say, oh, Dan, your, your words are really encouraging, just like the rest of God's word. (laughs) <laughs> like no 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 like, no 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 <laughs> like like the, like these these old testament books have a lot of weight yeah. to them and i'm and peter's saying uh yeah. that paul's stuff it should be equal like yeah. this is this is important you need to know this and he's saying it but but um and it, so yes to what you just said but no to what you just said he's okay. not actually correcting them he is saying, yes, Paul's letters, that's where it's at. Yeah. But he says it very casually here, like it's a given. Hmm. He doesn't say, now you need to listen to Paul because he's as important as the Old Testament. But he says is, yeah, some of Paul's letters are hard, just like the rest of the Old Testament. 
Like mm-hmm. it, it's it's sort of a it seems to me, and maybe I'm reading too much into this, but it seems to me that that Peter is assuming that both he and his audience already recognize that Paul's letters are on equal footing with the Old Testament. So he's not correcting them to tell them to trust. He's just saying, yeah, you know how like Paul says hard stuff? Yeah, it's like when Moses does it, kind of whenever God speaks, sometimes it's hard. Mm -hmm. And it's just like, it's sort of a given that it's on equal footing. Interesting. Okay. So the early Christians at some point seem to clearly recognize um, these writings are on uh, the same footing as what was received as the word of God from before. And in your, I guess, your time at, I don't know, seminary learning, was this verse brought up just to, I don't know, to talk about, like, this is why the weight of the epistles is important and why we kind of hold it to why, so why we hold it to the standard as yeah, I think everything it's, else. it's part of a larger picture. Okay. So, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll look at some of the, um, how the manuscripts were copied and passed on. And there's sort of this whole series of, can we trust the Bible? It's not just, well, second Peter three says it. So check and mate, check mate. Uh, yes. bam. <laughs> it's not, it's not at all what we're saying, but I think it's part of a larger picture that as we're putting these things together, here's one more puzzle piece that says, Hey, even Peter very early on, you know, it, the idea that Paul's writings were on the same ground as the old Testament that wasn't something the church decided in the year 400 or something like that. No, like mm-hmm. first century, this was already kind of a given. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's pretty significant. <laughs> yeah. So that, that's, that's what we looked at. Uh, next time we're going to start talking about um, what can we discern about the, the character of the gospel writers in general and, and can they be trusted? Okay. So uh, wait, re- repeat that one more time. <laughs> so uh, we're going to, we're going to wrap it up there. Okay. And then next time, we will pick it up, pick up the conversation by looking at, um, so if we read Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the, the four gospels in the New Testament, um, should we dismiss what they have to say um, for various like social or psychological reasons? Like gotcha. they, they loved Jesus, so obviously we can't listen to them. Mm-hmm. Or they didn't write this stuff down for decades, so or did they even write it? Yeah. So that the question of composition of how did these things get actually written by whom and can we trust them mm-hmm. uh, as people and as, as faithful tellers of truth and history? Okay. Woo, that's exciting. So we'll start that next time. Eager. All right. We'll catch you all later. All right. Thanks for joining us, friends. Yeah. We'll see you later. Happy summer. Yeah, happy summer. <laughs> that's the end of the episode. But we want to continue the conversation. Continue the conversation by sharing this episode, subscribing, or leaving a review. Connect with us on Instagram at 2414podcast. Connect with us through email at 2414 at stlukes-church.com. Or best of all, keep the conversation going by inviting someone to process with you so that you can each walk away with more understanding that leads to more conversation as the journey continues. If you happen to be in the Seattle-Tacoma area of Washington, stop by on a Sunday morning and say hi. 2414 is a podcast produced by St. Luke's Lutheran Church in Federal Way, Washington. To find more content, discover upcoming opportunities to connect in person, or to support the show, head on over to stlukes-church.com. Thanks for walking with us.